Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with Jay Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Welcome back. Today we're going to look at the CXC Accounting Unit 2 2021 Module 3 Response. And if you have missed the response for Module 1 and that of Module 2, the links are in the description below. We will be covering concepts relating to standard costing, budgeting, and capital budgeting. And we begin by looking at the first part to that question, which asks us to define the term standard costing. And uh, let us look at an ideal response for this question. Standard costing is a technique that establishes predetermined estimates of the cost of products and then compares these predetermined costs with actual costs as they are incurred. So basically, standard costing is a product system that determines product costs by using standards or norms or quantities and prices of the various inputs. And any other appropriate response will do. Let's move into the other part of the question where we are presented with some information relating to OBS Limited. OBS Limited is in the process of establishing direct material standards to use in its revamped budgeting process. Outline the three steps in the process of establishing direct materials standards. And let us look at those steps. The first step is to gather information or seek advice from materials experts, production supervisors, engineers, cost accountants, marketing personnel, and suppliers in making quantity and quality decision. Step two, prepare a bill of materials. Document the product materials, components, and their specifications showing quantity and quality needed. And the third step is to establish the cost or price, basically determining the standard price and Cost accountants accumulate historical cost data and determine all costs respond to changes in activity levels. And we are now going to move into the other part of the question. And for this part, we are asked to discuss, we're asked to discuss the following statement in relation to the use of budgets in an organization. And the statement reads, a budget assists managers in managing and controlling the activities for which they are responsible. Let us look at ideal responses for that question. And budgets aid management to Compare the actual results with the budgeted amounts for different categories of revenue and expenses. Determine variances and which category requires attention. Concentrate on significant deviations for the expected results. Also take appropriate corrective action to remedy the inefficiencies. And uh, we have evaluate performance of employees. And tell you what. You're not limited to these responses. Any other appropriate response will do for this section. But you are encouraged to ensure that you present responses relating to the areas of management and control when focusing on the statement on budgeting. Okay, moving on to the other part of the question. And uh, the question reads, still looking at OBS Limited. The question reads, OBS Limited has provided the 2021 and you're presented with the production units for four months. Three kg of materials are required for each unit produced. And this information is very important. Costing $12 per kg. 
target closing inventory each month should be equal to 25% of production needs for the next month. And bear in mind that the closing inventory for a period becomes the opening inventory for the next period. I need you to know that closing inventory for each month is 25% of production needs for the next month. Now, basically, if you look at, for example, we're looking at February. To get our closing inventory for February, it would be 25% of this 82,000. But bear in mind that this 25% of the 82,000 would form the opening inventory for March. If we're looking at March and we need to enter the closing inventory, it would be 25% of the 84,000 coming from April. Now this 25% of the 84,000 for April would form the opening inventory for April. So remember, closing inventory from one period becomes the opening inventory for the next period. Let's continue to look at the question. Material inventory on 30th of April was 66,750 kg. Now notice that you're required to prepare a purchases budget for the three months ending April, 2021. And guess what? You are required, you are required to use kg for the unit of the products. Let us now prepare the purchases budget. Please note that you need to ensure that you put in your editing and we're looking at the three months ending April 30th. So we're looking at February, March, April, and I have included a total column just in case that concept is needed when you're writing your exam. As a reminder, before we go any further, we are to show our results in kg, where one unit is equal to three kg of materials. So that means that wherever you have units, you need to multiply those by three to get your results in kg. The first thing that we are going to record is the production needs. And notice for each month, you're presented with the production needs in units. So it therefore means that for each month, you need to multiply by three in order to get the amount to be entered in your budget. So for February, we're going to multiply the 75,000 units by three to get our result to be entered in the budget. And that gives us an amount of 225,000. We're going to do the very same for March, multiply by three. So it is 82,000 multiplied by three to get the amount in kg, and that is 246,000. For April, it is the 84,000 multiplied by three, and the amount in kg is 252,000. Our total, or grand total for the production needs for the budgeted period is 723,000. Now we're going to move into adding our ending inventory. As a reminder, the ending inventory for each month, which is our closing inventory for each month, should be equal to 25% of the production needs for the next month. So for February, we need to ascertain 25% of the March production needs, which is 82,000. And for our calculation, that is 82,000 multiplied by 25%. And this would give us 20,500 units. But we need to report our results in kg. So we're going to multiply that by three. And this gives us an amount of 61,500 for the ending inventory for February. We're gonna apply the same concept for March. So to get the ending inventory for March, we're gonna pick up the production units for April. 
Multiply that by 25%. When you get your results in units, you're going to convert that to kg by multiplying by three. And that gives us an amount of 63,000. Now notice, coming from the question, the closing inventory, the ending inventory for April is 66,750 kg. That is already in kg. There's no need for us to do any, any conversion. So all we need to do is to record that 66,750 in our budget. And our total ending inventory for the budgeted period is 191,250 kg. Once we have our ending inventory, we are now able to calculate our total products required. For February, it is a 225,000 plus 61,500 that give us a result of 286,500. March, it is 246 plus 63,000 that give us 309,000. And for April, it is 252 plus 66,750. And this gives us 318,750. Now our total, total products required is 914,250. And there are two ways to get this. You can add up the total products required for each month. That will give you the total. Or you can just simply add up your grand total for the production needs for the budgeted period with your ending inventory for that budgeted period, total inventory for that budgeted period, and that should give you 914,250. Our next step is to ascertain our beginning inventory. Beginning inventory is the closing inventory from the previous period. And how did we get our closing inventory? Remember, that is simply 25% of the production needs for the next month. Basically, when you calculate the ending inventory, it will become the opening inventory for the next period. So when we looked at calculating the ending inventory for February, which was 82,000 multiplied by 25%, whatever you get for the ending inventory for February becomes the opening inventory for March. What I'm trying to say is that for the current month that you're looking at, to get your opening inventory, you would multiply that by 25%. Why I'm stressing that is that if you check the question, you would notice that you were not presented with the opening inventory for February. So if it is that you are preparing for January, it would simply mean that the ending inventory for January would have been 25% of February's production needs. And this 25% that would form the ending inventory for January would become our opening inventory for February. So simply to get our opening inventory, for the current month, it is 25% of the production needs. So to get February's opening inventory, it is 75,000 multiplied by 25%. And when you get your results, that would be in units. So you have to multiply by three to convert that to kg. And our result after calculation is 56,250 kg. For March, we're just going to transfer the ending inventory from February to the opening inventory for March, which is 61,500. And if it is that you go back to the question and ascertain 25% of March production needs and multiply that by three, you would still get the very same amount for the opening inventory. For April, the closing inventory coming from March, which is 63,000, would form the opening inventory, and that is 63,000 kg. Our total beginning inventory for the budgeted period is 180,750. And we are 
no at calculating or purchases needed for the period. For February, it is total products required less the opening inventory, and that give us a purchases need of 230 to 50 kg. March, it is 309,000 minus 61,500, and that give us 247,500. April, 318,750 minus 63,000 give us 255,750. And our total purchases needed for the three months period, that budgeted period is 733,500. We're now going to look at the final part of the question, which is part D. And uh, again, we're still looking at OBS Limited. And the question reads, OBS Limited is considering expanding its production capacity with the purchase of new machines. The machines are expected to cost $700,000 and will have a useful life of 10 years with zero salvage value. The company uses a discount rate of 12% and expects an annual increase in cash flow as follows. And we have the information for five years in terms of the cash flow. And we are also presented with a table with the present value interest factor based on the 12% discount rate. And we're asked to calculate the net present value of the machine purchase. So we need from this question, the cash flow for each year, the present value interest factor. And we also need the costs that the machines are expected to to cost the business. So in order to calculate the net present value, we need a column for the period, one for cash flow, one for present value interest factor, and one for the present value. And the present value interest factor is used to estimate the current worth of a sum of money that is to be received at some future date. While the present value is the current value of a future sum of money or stream of cash flows given a specified rate of return. So the first year, in the first year, in the year when the machines are acquired, we look at that as period zero. That's the year when it is acquired by the business. And the cash flow for that, there will be an outlay of 700,000 and the uh, the present value interest factor at that time would be one. And in order for us to get our present value, we multiply the cash flow by the present value interest factor. And that gives us a negative $700,000 showing an outlay of cash. Now, the year after, we will now look at that as period one. And we are going back to the question to see what the cash flow is. And for year one, the cash flow is $200,000. So the business is expected to retrieve $200,000 for year one. But for that period, the present value interest factor based on the discount rate is 0 0.893. So that information along with the cash flow, we're going to enter that in our workings and the cash flow is 200,000. The present value interest factor based on the discount rate is 0.893. And uh, in order to get to our present value, we're gonna multiply the cash flow by the present value interest factor. And that gives us a value of $178,600. And bear in mind that this would be reducing the outlay because this return would be coming into the business. We're going to move into year two. And for year two, based on the question, OBS is expecting a cash flow of 250000 And based on the rate, which is the present value interest factor, we have point. 797 for that. 
So we're going to use that now to proceed with our calculation. 250000 for the cash flow and the present value interest factor is 0 0.797. When we do our calculation, which is to multiply the cash flow by the present value interest factor, we get a value of $199,250. Now we're moving into year three. And in year three, based on the question, we have uh, for the cash flow, $300,000. And the present value interest factor is 0 0.712. So let us proceed to record that and do our calculation. Cash flow, 300000 Present value interest factor is 0 0.712. Multiply cash flow by the present value interest factor, we get a value of $213,600. And we now move into year four. Now for year four, based on the question, the cash flow is 230000 and the present valid interest factor rate is 0 0.636. And uh, our present value based on that information for year four is $146,280. And we move into year five. And uh, year five, we are seeing a cash flow of 200,000 and the present value interest factor is 0 0.567. And based on that information, our present value is $113,400. And we are now able to determine our net present value. After our calculation, the first year, the initial year when the machines are acquired, there's an expected outlay of 700000 But there, for the five years, there is an inflow, cash expected to based on the return, and those are positives. So the outlay subtract the the returns for each year based on what is expected will give us the net present value and after our calculation we have a net present value of 151,130 dollars and that is our net present value so remember based on the column your present value column that is what you Calculate the 700 is what is expected as outflow, while the other figures are inflows over the five year period and uh, it give us a result of 151,130 after a calculation. Now, the next part of the question, which is a final portion ask us to determine the discounted payback period. So we are gonna to proceed to calculate that. And we need our information from this part where we had calculated the net present value. So we're moving on to calculating the discount payback period. So let's begin. Based on the question, there is an outlay of uh, 700,000, which in the business, OBS is expecting to pay that to acquire the machines. And based on our workings and the present value interest factor, our workings indicated that for year one, there is a present value of 178,600. That would be an inflow for the business. So therefore, it's going to reduce the outlay. So we're going to less year one inflow of 178600 which leave us with a balance at the end of year one of 
$521,400. Now, in terms of year two, we are going to pick up the present value, and that is $199,250. Now, this inflow that is expected is going to reduce the balance. So we're going to subtract that value, and it gives us a balance of $322,150. Now, we're going to move into year three. And for year three, we have a present value of $213,600. Now, when that is subtracted from the $322,150, which was the previous balance, we have a value in balance of $108,000. $550. So we're now at the end of year three, and we're still seeing that the business would not have recovered all that it would have spent in order to acquire the machines. So we're seeing that there's a balance that would be still outstanding at the end of year three of $108,550. But let us go back to our previous workings where we were calculating the present value, net present value, and take a look at year four. Now for year four, we're seeing that the business is expecting to collect, to receive $146,280. But when we compare this value with the balance that is still outstanding or would still be outstanding, we're seeing that this amount is greater than the, the balance. So we know that somewhere in year three, the business would recover all that amount that would have been used to invest in that fixed asset. So with that said, it now takes us to the point where we are now going to determine. We know that it is going to take them three years to recover, but three years and how much months. So we are going to determine now the amount of months that it will take them because we want to get the exact period in which the business would recover that amount that would have been invested in the machines. So in order to do that, we're gonna pick up the expected amount for year four, and uh, we're gonna use that along with the balance at the end of year three. But how are we going to do our calculation? We're going to divide this balance of 108,550 by the expected amount that the business is ex um, would receive in year four, and that would give us the amount of months. So let's go. During year four, 108,550, which is the balance, is divided by the expected amount that the business should receive in year four, and that give us a value of 0 0.742, and that is in terms of months. So it therefore means that the payback period is three years, three years, and 8.9 months. So it is 3.742 years. So your response would be, because we know that based on calculation, the amount, the balance in year three is less than what would be collected in year four. We know that's going to take them three years, three years and how much months. So it is three point based on the result that we have right here, 3.742 years, or simply three years and 8.9 months. And this is basically indicating to us that that is the period it would take the business to recover the amount that they would have used to invest in that fixed asset, the machines, the amount that they would have spent to acquire the fixed assets. And that takes us to the end of working the CXC Accounting Unit 2 2021 paper. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.